Okay, so this again is um, some video solutions to Quiz 5. And I know these are really hard to read, so you're meant to uh, either print Quiz 5 off of the class website, or better yet, even uh, have your own Quiz 5 in front of you uh, while we're working through these. Okay, uh, so my apologies for the small print there, but I think we'll get through these. Good. So the idea here is that sometimes, you know, an audio commentary can help with uh, the solution a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at quiz five. Uh, first ones are really set up for uh, L'Hopital's rule, so you definitely want to check first to see if L'Hopital's rule works. Um, so I need either a zero over zero or a plus or minus infinity divided by plus or minus infinity. And the first one, uh, as t goes to zero, this is going to be one minus one, which is zero, and the sign of zero is zero. So this is zero over zero. Okay, so that does work. So now when we take the limit, as t goes to zero using L'Hopital, right, we're going to have the derivative of the top, which is 2e to the 2t, divided by the derivative of the bottom, which is cosine of t. And so now we just get uh, 2 over 1, right? Good. Now when I plug in a 1, I get uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, divided by 2, so that's just 3 halves. So in that case, we didn't even need L'Hopital. So be careful. Uh, do check to see uh, what happens, you know, on your limit before you actually use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, in the bottom one here, if you check uh, as x goes to infinity, the numerator is going to positive infinity, and the denominator is going to positive infinity. So therefore, in this case, you have the infinity over infinity case. So now when we take L'Hopital's rule, uh, x is going to infinity. Uh, you get 6x plus 2 on the top, and on the bottom you get uh, 10x. Okay, so again, uh, as x goes to infinity, both of these go to infinity, so we, had, we have infinity over infinity again, so we can use L'Hopital again. And so, in this case, it would be uh, 6 over 10, right? And notice the 6 over 10 is actually the 3 over 5. Um, Good. Now, oops. Uh, here we have some a story problem. Two positive numbers that sum to 100. So x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0. So let x and y be our two numbers. They sum to 100. So everybody should know what a sum is, right? A sum is where you add the things together. Uh, what is the maximum possible product? So we want to find the max of the quantity x times y. Okay, but again, uh, in this case, um, uh, the, the problem with finding the maximum is we have two variables, so you need to use uh, this extra piece of information to make a substitution. So we can substitute y is equal to 100 minus x. And so now we'll find the maximum of x times 100 minus x. Okay. And so if you know your functions pretty well, you know that this is a parabola. This is 100x minus x squared. And so where does the parabola go through the x-axis? Uh, at x equals 0 and at x equals 100. And so this is going to be our parabola here. Good. So where is the maximum value? Uh, by the way, it's an upside down parabola because of the minus x squared, right? Uh, so the maximum is going to be found where x is right in between, so that's at x equals 50. And so therefore x must be 50 and y equals 50. And that is the maximum because it's an upside down parabola. We're finding the location of the vertex. Very good. So the maximum pro possible product then is 50 times 50. which is, what, 2,500? Good. All right. <clears throat> Find the absolute max and absolute min of a function on an interval. So if you're dealing with a function on an interval, that means you're building a table of values, right? And so what goes into the table? Oops, sorry about that. 
uh, critical points and endpoints. So we have uh, endpoints of minus one half and four, and now we only want to include the critical points that are inside this interval. So if I take the derivative, looks like I get 3x squared minus 6x. And so if I factor that, I could factor a 3 out too. I would just end up with x times x minus 2, right? So x equals 0 and x equals 2 are the two uh, two critical points. And now you plug all these points into your function. Um, let's see, I'll pause while I do that so you don't have to watch me fill them in. Okay, so here are the values that I've found. If I plug x into my function, I get 1 8th. 0 gives me 1. 2 gives me minus 3. And 4 gives me 17. So that's pretty clearly the max. And where's the absolute min? Right there. Good. Uh, so for the sake of time, I'll let you just circle and indicate where those values are. Good. So now let's let uh, f of x be x cubed minus 3x squared. Use sign charts to determine the intervals on which f is increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. Okay, remember, where f is increasing or decreasing, that means that the derivative is either positive or negative, and concave up, concave down means the second derivative is positive or negative. And so if I take my first derivative, I get uh, 3x squared, that's the same same one as up here, right? And so uh, factoring that out uh, gives me that, and then if I take a look at my sign chart, because that's what it's being asked here. If I, let's see, I'm going to separate it at 0 and at 2. And actually, I know already know what this is going to look like, right? This is a parabola that goes up. So this is going to be positive, negative, positive, right off the bat. Okay, so then for the second derivative, I get 6x minus 6, which is 6 times x minus 1. Uh, and so for the second derivative then, I'll try to line things up here a little bit. Uh, if x is less than 1, like for example x equals 0, then I have a negative number, and if x is bigger than 1, I get a positive number. So here's uh, where my function is increasing, decreasing, increasing, concave down, concave up. Good. So it's a lot easier to indicate these on the sign chart, by the way. Good. Last problem. We want to construct a rectangle with a base on the x-axis and its upper corners on the parabola y equals 1 minus x squared. One such possible rectangle is shown. What are the dimensions of the rectangle that gives the greatest possible area? So uh, the, the main thing when you're looking at this is that if this is the point x, y, then the x is actually just this distance from here to here, right? The origin out. And then this right here is your y. Right? That's what it means to have a point x, y on the graph. It's being measured from the origin. And so this is also going to have length x then. And so altogether, the area is going to be 2x times y. Okay. Uh, we want greatest possible area. So we want to find the max of the area. And of course the problem again is that we have two variables. But we haven't taken into account that the y is actually equal to 1 minus x squared. So in place of y we can put in a 1 minus x squared. And so our area now in terms of x alone is 2x times 1 minus x squared. Good. Which is uh, 2x minus 2x cubed. Good. And now we can do our usual routine. Oh, by the way, x must be between 0 and what? Uh, looks like uh, 1, right? Good. And so this is now, you could build a table. 0 and 1. Of course, if you put in 0 for your area, you get 0. Similarly, if you put on a 1 for your area, you get 0. So really, anything that you get here is going to be your max. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and go through it. A prime is 2 minus 
what is that, 6x squared? Uh, so you want to set that equal to 0. So 2 minus 6x squared equals 0. Uh, 6x squared equals 2. x squared equals 1 third. x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 third. Or 1 over the square root of 3. So 1 over the square root of 3 is going to be your number. Notice that that's going to be 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 thirds for y. So y is 2 thirds. And then your area is going to be what? 2 over the 2 over 3 root 3. And so it doesn't really matter, right? Because as long as it's a positive number, that's going to be your max. So your maximum occurs at 1 over the square root of 3. So the dimensions of the rectangle is going to be uh, 2 times 1 over the square root of 3, right? That's the full width. And then the height is going to be 2 thirds. Good. All right, the farmer and the rectangle, let's see, five, five pens along the river. Um, so this is our river. So this is the one that the picture was missing. So hopefully we got that okay. Let's see, for five pens, we need four of these lines, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. And then we'll just take this to be X and this to be Y. Good. So uh, we want to maximize the area, x times y. And then the perimeter, the amount of fencing, is going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6x plus y. And the amount of fencing we have is 300. Good. So now we have that we're trying to maximize x times 300 minus 6x. Good. Notice that you could factor out the 6. 6x six times, what's that going to be? 50 minus x. And so uh, x equals, oh, so uh, this is a parabola. So without even doing any work, right? I, I know this is a parabola, it opens up. Um, x equals 0 and x equals 50. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it opens down, not up. <laughs> that was going to be a problem. Okay, so it looks like this, right? So where is your maximum? Uh, looks like it x equals 25, right? Let me pause for a moment. Good. Uh, by the way, you might notice that 6 times 25, which is the amount that you're using for this much, 6 times 25 is actually going to be 150. So what we're saying here is that uh, this is going to be 150, and this is going to be 150. And that's how we're getting our max. So 6x is 150, right? And so this is 3, 3 minus 150 is 150. Then 25 times 150 <laughs> is going to be our maximum area. Let's see, do we know... Oh, we just needed to know how, what the fencing was. So x is equal to 25, and y is equal to 150. Good, and there's the solution. Good. All right, so those are the solutions to quiz 5. Uh, we'll come up with one for quiz 6 as well.